Hey everybody, this is Eli with Premiere on Script, and welcome back to video five, the final video of this series, uh, where we are building a remote renderer, a remote controller for our Adobe application, in this case, Premiere. Uh, so in the past couple movies, the first one we had a demo, and then in, uh, in the next three, we built our server, our web page, and the last movie, we just built our Premiere panel that uh, looks really really simple and just queues up uh, render jobs from sequences in Premiere over to Adobe Media Encoder. Uh, but like I said in the last video, uh, this is all kind of useless unless you can access it remotely, right? Uh, like I showed in the very first video's demo. So what we're going to do is in order to get this to work, we are going to have to build an app on Heroku. So Heroku is a great service, super easy. Uh, and what you do is uh, the first steps are going to be to download the Heroku uh, CLI. Uh, let's see. And you can download this here. I'll include this link in the description. Um, so you download the Heroku CLI and then also create a Heroku account. We'll be using their free tier in order to get this um, app up and running. Uh, so our next steps in order to get this live is going to be to CD into our remote app, which we're already in because uh, we've been running npm start to get the, the server uh, started. And once you have the Heroku command line tools, you can type in Heroku and it will give you a bunch of options. What we are going to want to do is uh, first thing inside this, let's create a, a Git repository. So we'll do Git init. And then we will do git add. We'll add all the files in there. We added the git ignore earlier, so we won't add in our node modules folder. And then we will do git commit with a message of um, note app ready. All right, so those are all committed. And now we can do Heroku create. And we'll give this name, uh, this app, a name of Adobe Remote. And now we've created this URL, Adobe Remote.HerokuApp.com. The next step is going to be to push that Git repository up to Heroku where it's going to be hosted. A uh, first step we can do is run Heroku. Uh, this is going to be like local testing once for once we push this app up. And it says that that is okay. It's listening on port 500. If we go to local hosts or 5,000, sorry, port 5,000, it looks like it's serving that web page up properly. So no errors there. Let's quit out of that and then go to Heroku and then go to Git push Heroku master. And this is going to push all of our code up to Heroku where it will be hosted. And this will take just a couple minutes because it's going to push it up there and then it's going to install all the dependencies that are inside our uh, package.json file as well. Okay, and that's deployed. Here now we can press control click and open this up in Chrome. And we now see our site live. I'm going to pull out my phone now uh, I'm going to close this, pull out my phone, and I'm going to load up uh, the panel and see if this works when connecting from my phone. One thing we're going to have to change on the panel side is now that we have this URL, https adobe remote.herokuapp.com, let's go out to remote, ppro folder. Let's go to our main JS and rather than uh, doing IO to our local host, let's change this to our Heroku app. And now we will save that, pop over to Premiere and open up Adobe Remote. And now you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to the URL that we saw in just a second ago, Adobe Remote dot Heroku app dot com. I see everything, and when I retrieve sequences, it does not work. Give me a second. 
I had a little, uh, just a space in front of that HTTPS there. And so now I just requested sequences. You can say it, see the text change to sending sequences. I'm selecting video two, and I'm gonna hit render sequence right now. And that is going to remotely uh, queue up that task to media encoder. So our app is now up and working and uh, that's what you guys tuned in for. So I hope this was a helpful tutorial. Just a couple things I meant I wanted to mention. Uh, this was a very bare bones tutorial. There's a couple things you want to keep in mind if you're actually going to build this into your workflow. Um, things like authentication. I have to go on and now that we have this Adobe remote app on Heroku, I have to put it down because I don't want anyone or take it down because I don't want anyone going to that URL that is watching this YouTube video and then like if for some reason that panel is open in my premiere, they will just be able to remotely queue my sequences up. So there's some sort of authentication you should include in here. Error checking. We ran into a couple errors along the way here today. Uh, taking more time to think out error checking is probably pretty important, along with unique ID tracking for multiple systems to subscribe. Uh, so one thing that's really cool is I could, on on any surface that I can go to that URL, um, I could load this up and be queuing it. Uh, and I could also load this up in different machines. But once you, uh, those unique socket IDs that we were we were seeing as we were connecting to the, to the socket host, um, you can track those. And then uh, maybe you get this up so you have an entire team of video editors that are running this panel. And um, you can connect to each one of their socket IDs, hold those as a unique ID and like queue it up on different systems. Um, so there's unique ID tracking that you can you can track that and add some extra new features. And then there's more features on top of this. There's a lot you can do with this. Uh, rendering was just the easiest way for me to kind of display a quick and easy example of how you could use this. But uh, the sky's the limit. The API of whatever application you choose is really l the limit of what this can do as long as you have a system to access on the other end. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you find it helpful and you can build some cool things. Uh, if you'd like, comment in the comments below to let me know what you're going to use this this technique for and these technologies for. I'd love to hear it. Uh, I will be posting uh, write-ups for all of these on the website as well for a little extra support. And I'll be including the GitHub link as well if you want to go on and look at the code that I wrote today. So thank you again for watching. I'm Eli, and I'll see you in the next one.